Welcome to this tutorial on how to use the Warp Engine feature in the Tangent Mapper. We're going to use it to map some controls in DaVinci Resolve to the Tangent Element panels. This tutorial also applies to the Ripple panel and the Element VS app, but not the Wave or Wave 2 panels. The Warp Engine works by recording mouse inputs from the Resolve UI and saving them as a script. You can then map those scripts to physical controls on our panels. You can, if you wish, create and edit scripts manually, but you shouldn't need to do this very often, if ever. Right, let's get started. We'll start by enabling the Warp Engine in the Mapper. Launch the Mapper, go to the Warp Engine menu and select Enable Warp Engine. Note the displays on the panels will now show a grid. This indicates we're now using our custom map and not the Resolve Fix map. If we press the A and B buttons together on the TK panel, we switch back to the Resolve Fix mapping. Press the A and B buttons again, and we toggle back to our custom map. We can click on the tabs at the top of the window to select which panel we want to map. So let's go back to the TK panel, as it's the one we're going to be concentrating on in this tutorial. We're going to map the B button in the TK panel to open the primary colour wheels in Resolve. In the mapper, click on the B button. This will open the control mapping window. Ignore the mappings apply to section and just leave it on current mode. You can also ignore the alternate mapping section. In the standard mapping section, click on no mapping and select warp. This will open the warp script editor window. The left hand area will show you all the warp scripts you've created. From here you can edit them or apply them to other controls on the panel. Click on the new button to create a new script and give the script a name. We're going to call it Wheels. The On Change section is where we record our script that we want to perform when we press the B button on the panel. You can ignore the On Reset section as this doesn't apply to buttons. We'll cover this one later when we map the trackable. Click the Record button in the On Change area. The mapper disappears and we see Resolve with a red border around the screen. This indicates that you are in recording mode. Note if you have dual monitors, you can only record the main monitor with the red border around it. We also have a floating record window, which we can move around. The restart button allows you to restart the recording if you make a mistake, and the finish button ends the recording. First, we'll click on the colour workspace button, followed by colour wheels button, and finally the wheels button. Note the Resolve doesn't respond during the recording. Now click on the Finish button to end the recording. We're now back at the Mapper and the Warp Script Editor window. You'll see that the On Change section is filled in with the script we've just recorded. The last thing we need to do is click on Save and Select button. This saves the script and selects it as the script to perform when we press the B button on the panel. We're now back at the Control Mapping window and you'll see that the B button now has wheels assigned to it. Let's test what we've just done. Close the control mapping window and bring Resolve to the foreground. Navigate away from the primary colour wheels so we can see what happens when we press the B button. Now press the B button on the TK panel and we see the warp script being triggered which will open the colour wheels. Press the A and B to switch to Resolve Fix Mapping and now the B button will revert to acting as bypass. To switch back to our custom map, press A and B again. I'll now show you how to map the offset colour wheel to the right hand ball on the TK panel. Make sure that the colour wheels are open in Resolve and bring the mapper to the foreground. Click on the right hand red ball in the mapper to open the control mapping window. In the standard mapping section click on no combined mapping, then combined and finally trackable warp. This will open the warp script editor window. Click New to create a new script and gave the script a name. We're going to call it Offset Ball. Now in the On Change area, click Record. Click and hold in the centre of the offset colour wheel and drag up and to the right as if you were trying to move it. Continue to drag until the green arrow appears and then release. Remember that Resolve doesn't respond during the recording. When you're done, click Finish to go back to the Warp Script Editor window. We can see the script we've just recorded in the On Change area. Click on Save and Select to save the script and assign it to the right hand ball. 
Note the display on the TK panel shows the name of the script we've mapped to the ball. Let's test what we've just done. Close the control mapping window and bring Resolve to the foreground. Now if I move the right hand ball on the panel, you'll see that the offset colour wheel is now moving. Press the A and B buttons to switch to Resolve Fix Mapping and the ball returns to controlling the Gain colour wheel. To switch back to our custom map, press A and B again. Now let's map the offset colour wheel reset to the ball's reset button on the TK panel. This is the dot button above the ball. Leave the colour wheels open in Resolve and bring the mapper to the foreground. Click on the right hand red ball in the mapper to open the control mapping window. In the standard mapping section, click on offset ball to open the warp editor window. You'll see the offset ball script which we just recorded. This time, click on the record button in the on recess area and we're back in recording mode again. Click on the offset colour wheels reset icon and then finish the recording. You can now see the script we've just recorded in the on recess area. This time you just need to click on save edits as this script pair is already assigned to the right hand ball. Let's quickly test this by bringing resolve to the foreground. Move the right hand ball on the panel to move the offset colour wheel. Then press the ball reset button on the panel. The offset colour wheel will reset. Now we'll map the offset master dial to the ring around the right hand ball on the panel. Leave the colour wheels open in Resolve and bring the mapper to the foreground. This time, click on the top button below the right hand ball in the mapper. This is for mapping the ring axis. The bottom two buttons are for individually mapping the X and Y axes of the ball, which we've already assigned with a combined mapping. In the control mapping window, in the standard mapping section, click on no mapping and select warp. In the warp script editor window, create a new script called offset master. First, let's record the offset master dial being dragged. Click the on change record button. Click and drag the offset master dial to the right until the green arrow appears. Then click finish. We can also add the reset while we're here. This will be mapped to the ring button above the ball on the TK panel. Click the on reset record button. Click the offset colour wheel reset icon and then click finish. Finally, click the save and select button. Now you can see that the ring is controlling the offset master dial and the ring button resets the offset control. Let's take a quick look at mapping a script to a knob on the KB panel. We could record a new script as we just did for the offset master, but we can use that same script and assign it to a knob. So let's do that. In the mapper, select the KB panel, click on a knob to open the control mapping window and set it to be warp. Then in the warp script editor window, select the offset master script from the list. Clicking save and select will assign that script to the knob. One final thing we ought to mention is how to change the sensitivity of a control in a warp script. For this we need to do a bit of manual editing, but don't let that put you off, it really is very simple. Switch the mapper back to the TK panel and click on the right hand ball to open the control mapping window. Click on the script name to open it in the warp script editor. Look at the move line in the script, there are both X and Y values. If we put a multiplier before either of these, we can change their sensitivity. You'll see that Y already has a multiplier of minus 1, which reverses the direction of the control. This is required to make the ball movement on the panel match the colour wheel in Resolve. Let's half the sensitivity of this control script by adding a multiplier of 0.5 before both X and Y. Remember that Y needs to be reversed, so we need minus 0.5. To make the control move twice as fast, we can use a multiplier of 2. Setting the sensitivity is much the same for scripts which are assigned to a ring or a knob. Remember to click Save Edits when you're done. Let's save our custom map. 
It's worth noting you can create as many maps as you want and use whichever suits your session. Bring the mapper to the foreground and in the file menu select Save. Enter a name for the custom map. Click Save and we're done. That ends this tutorial. It's worth pointing out that you don't need to leave the mapper running. Once you finish mapping your controls, you can just close it. For a complete understanding of all the things you can do, please read the Mapper Made Simple and the Warp Engine Made Simple guides. All the things we said to ignore in this video can be incredibly useful, especially if you need a complex mapping with different modes and multiple banks of controls. The guides explain all this and much more. Thank <laughs> you.